of your property to just anyone. Remember, insurance related or not, it's your home and your decision who repairs it. Let the professionals at Alpine Construction restore your peace of mind. Call 519-737-0500. Essex Home Furnishings, so good to it's Lisa for EHF. There's something new and exciting at EHF. It's the world's first performance recliner, and everybody's talking about it. It's called Revive by Natuzzi, a recliner that responds to your body's movement. It will be the signature piece of your home. Revive is at EHF, Highway 3 in Essex. Local news first. Everything you need for your drive will be after. Show the Detroit Auto Show opens to the media with a lot of buzz swirling around the new Chrysler minivan. We take you to Kobo, plus some of the top tips for dog training when dealing with barking and aggression. Local news, weather, traffic, and sports. The afternoon news, weekdays 3 and 6 on AM 800. have not been widely reported at all um, about these melted corium fuel rods. Can we talk well, about I mean, what has happened in essence is uh, most people are aware that there was a major explosion mm -hmm. happened with the reactor number one and then number three and then mm -hmm. something happened and number four went off for whatever reason. And um, what happened in essence was that the explosions of reactors one and three blew the doors off of number two and what happened when that the hydrogen that would normally build up to cause this explosion it just simply seeped into the atmosphere so what has been happening is we've been getting this radiation not only going into the ground but into the atmosphere as well and so it is now circumventing the globe and what has happened again was the fact that we, uh, let's say we, I'm talking about Japan, it's not being totally their fault. I mean, this was a severe uh, accident due to the Japanese tsunami that hit them, but it has been difficult for them to really find ways to contain this leak, this radiation. And then it was really, really difficult for them because they had so much Thank you. 
uh, underground water chamber and ended up out into the ocean. Because levels were discovered off of the coast? Off the coast of the coast. And then it fragmented, and we believe, and just has a debris field that spreads out over about 241 kilometers, as far as we can tell. Um, and then from there, what we're looking at is that this radiation is still fueling into the ocean basin itself. Still? Yes. And that is causing great harm to life itself in the ocean. And we've got to find a way to go in and to remediate this problem. Well, let's talk about some of the effects. So this is continually, continually going on. Right. Now, what happened was it was around 2013, October. They did a move on scan. This is like a, a giant uh, machine that will allow you to actually build Thank you. 
so they don't go critical. They have about 647 tons of fuel rods to protect, and they are running out of uh, place to put the water tank, and they are having a hard time remediating this water so that it can be reused. And as a result, salmon have been found dead or dying in this in this region of the Pacific Northwest. How have those deaths been related to the radioactive material? No, the scientists that are looking at it do not want to make that relationship. Oh, of course not. Yeah. And like if you've noticed recently they have stopped um, all consumption of the indigenous crab in the San Francisco area. Of course, they do not. They do not relate that to radioactive crabs. They relate it to something called dominic acid. But um, I, I'm trying my best to figure out why do you not want to let people understand what's going on so they can better protect themselves and their families. And I think the reason is they don't have a solution. Therefore, let's not panic the public. And what I want to do is basically say, please, we can have solutions. We've tested them in the lab. As a matter of fact, it's been tested in the labs in Fukushima at Kawamata. Labs in Fukushima, um, we've tested some of the blends that we have, the nuclear remediation mineral blends, and they were tested successful for remediating radiation in about 72 hours. I think in order to understand what some of those remediation possibilities are, uh, for example, you stated in your uh, research material that the drought that is happening in the West Coast could have to do with the radiation in the ocean. Can you explain that? Well, we have to understand that the whole of our ecology, the whole of our creation that we're experiencing here on Earth is one gigantic living conscious aware being, and that there is in fact no separation of life, and that when you are incorporating any kind of toxin into a living system, the whole system is going to cringe. And in the case of radiation, chemtrails, and things of that sort being poured in and around our environment, it causes our soil to be um, out of balance from, from the mineral standpoint. It causes the air to be uh, toxic. It causes the radiation, and it breaks what is called a hydrologic cycle. That's where you know you have evaporation. Right. That's where you have cloud pools and you have wind and all of that is rock. And I believe it's a huge of the toxicity in our time. Now we find ways to cut the gas. We can Well, I was 
listening to a talk by, I believe her name is um, Lauren Monet, and she was talking about uh, fighter jets over in Guam. One of them was landing, and the windshield fell out. And when they figured out what was happening, the Wigner had back had hit it with the river, the river that was holding it together. And so that means that plane was flying through a lot of radiation yes. in yes. order for it to land and the windshield to fall out. Well, that's happening to a lot of planes, all that flying in and around. are safe, what are not, are there certain chemicals that are considered benign and some that are considered extremely dangerous? Well, there are probably over 200 different nucleotides. Now, uh, most of the scientists now are just looking at like cesium 134 or 137. They're under the opinion that the signature of uh, the nucleotide coming from Fukushima is cesium 134. Now, there are many other nucleotides that are coming in the atmosphere, coming in the water, that are equally dangerous. And um, I don't want to go through and bore the audience with all the different types, but the bottom line is, is that all of them, and you were asking if there was a safe limit, I'm not aware of any right. limit. Well, uh, well, let me ask you though, is the, so the, the fish that are, you know, the salmon that are dying in the sperm whale that are dying out there, do those, have they contained this particular cesium-134? No, they have. Not and, it, and it has a, 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 a uh, life of quite a few years, you know, like 30 years or something like that. But none of these, these dead, uh, the fish, the salmon and so forth, have had traces of that particular season. No one has bothered to measure them as far as I know. Why not? I have a lot of time. The question, like I said, I believe that there is a concerted effort to squash this information and to keep it from the public. Why? Keep in the mind that even in Japan, it is a felony for them to discuss it. So their scientists can't tell the public, and the news people can't report what's going on. And then if you come here in the United States, I'm seeing the same kind of thing happening here. I'm seeing that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, we have something called the RADNET, or the Radiation Network, and they shut it off. 
And then when I try to figure out why did you shut it off? Well, they're saying in essence that cell phone towers are interfering with their ability to communicate. So we don't have a solution, so we just turned it off. I see. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with more facts, statistics around where we're going to report on the facts around Fukushima and the nuclear power plant. Right back. This is Lisa Gar. You're listening to Coast to Coast AM. So whether you're buying, selling, or thinking about investing in an income property, the Dan Jemis Real Estate Team has you covered. Visit danjemis.com and book your free home market evaluation today.
This is Coast to Coast AM. Now, here's your guest host, Lisa Gar. Welcome back to Coast to Coast AM. I am Lisa Gar, and if you'd like to check out my website, I have a, a regular set of shows that I do throughout the week. You can find it all at theawareshow.com. That's T H E A W A R E S H O W dot com. I broadcast many different shows throughout the week, and I'd love to have you join one of my shows. I also do a lot of great video interviews as well. I also have a show on Guy and TV along with George on that network, and um, it's called Lisa's Inspiration. And you can find that at Lisa's Inspiration. So check all of that out, and we will come back and continue our conversation uh, with Dennis Watts. Again, this is Lisa Gar, and you can post to the next day. Like the Camaro, Corvette, Enclave, Equinox, Cruise, and more. Plus, see the totally redesigned Sierra with its bold style, redesigned interior, and state of the art technology. The Sierra is the new standard for heavy duty trucks. Don't forget the Canadian built terrain, a real luxury in a compact crossover. For details, see Gus Revenberg Chevrolet Buick GMC, a member of the Revenberg Automotive family, Tempsey Road East at Forest Glade Drive. From the AM800 Weather Center, here's the latest forecast. A mix of sun and cloud today with a 40% chance of flurries. Winds gusting to 50 kilometers an hour with the afternoon high only reaching minus 8. Then flurries at night with a low of minus 6. Tuesday periods of snow, high winds and a daytime high of minus 6. Wednesday cloudy with a 30% chance of flurries and a high of minus 6 again. And for Thursday we'll see cloudy skies with a 40% chance of flurries and a daytime high of minus 3. News, weather, sports, business, information, entertainment, contest. It's our midday buffet of all things news, weather, sports, information, community interviews, and oh so much more. It's a lot of fun and it happens in 60 minutes on the Noon Report weekdays from 12 to 1 with me, Arms Boom and Light, right here on AM 800. Arms Boom and Light on the Noon Report every weekday, noon to 1 on AM 800. a 
to remediate their, the facility and to remediate the, the problem that has happened out in the ocean off the coast of Fukushima. And we believe we have the ocean. We believe that we have these special extreme wild microbes that have the ability to go and continue radiation at the uh, energetic level. because they don't know what else to call it because it is different than anything else. It's not really a bacteria. It is more like an RNA-based extremophile nanomicrobe. Okay. <laughs> that it has no DNA associated with it. Wow. It, uh, it has RNA, ribonucleic acid. And what it does in essence is it was designed by the creator to fix and to restore creation at the foundation. Where is it found? Everywhere. Mostly in and around volcanic. It lives in lava. It lives under the ocean at those really hot vents. It can live in salt, it can live in highly toxic areas and, and be comfortable and live in ice and still be comfortable and they are immortal for all intent and purpose. Seems like it, yes. Hmm. All intent and purpose. Now, we've been using them primarily for doing compost and things of that sort, but I feel, this is just my opinion, and a hypothesis, so to speak, that they can be used on a much wider scale for this health and healing in general of our trees, our plants, our farm animals, and also the human body can be benefited by these beings too when we learn what does it take for them to thrive in that environment. And I believe we're very, very close to finding that out. Right now, 
they have found ways to get rid of all of them. But tritium seems to be the most persistent nuclear tide, and they don't have a way of getting rid of it. And as a result, that's the one they're pouring into the ocean and further poisoning our Pacific Ocean. And my main concern is not only just the fish are having a hard time, but my concern is the vital point. These are the little tiny microbes, which in my opinion is the largest biomass on the planet. The lifeblood of the ocean, yes. They produce close to 80% of the oxygen we breathe on this planet. Three to the other 20%. That includes the Amazon and our uh, redwoods up north and the other forests that we have here and there. That is how we breathe and have an atmosphere because of their presence. And if we are poisoning their environment, how do they function? How can they produce what we need in order to survive? That leads to an extinction level event if they cannot hold their self together because of too much toxic radiation. Now normally the ocean is intelligent. It's and it has the ability to remediate radiation. Yes. But it cannot remediate if I'm constantly assaulting it. Right. Right, it can do it once or but what now has this um this uh, nuclear remediation mineral blend has it been tested and has it been has it proved to be effective in neutralizing? At Kawamata Lab it will be yeah, back in 2013. And why, uh, what happened at that point? And that was several years ago. Yeah, that was back in 2013. And like I said, I believe that because I didn't get the full details as to why didn't you jump on this and start to implement it immediately? Well, my, 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 my thought is, is that again, they want to fear because the Japanese right now, like I said, it's a felony for them to discuss the radiation problem. A felony to discuss it, but what about doing something about it? Yeah, well, <sighs> they're doing what they're doing. It's like moving chairs on the Titanic. And that's just moving <laughs> the water and building tanks and storing all their wastewater in those tanks. That's where they're spending all their money. They don't have any other pollution beyond that, as far as I can tell. And because the reactor building, the radiation is just too powerful and no one can go near them. Right. And even cranes right. can't even survive in the presence of this radiation. They, the embrittlement or the Wigner effect takes hold and the cranes fall falling apart. So they do have a major challenge, but if we can put these microbes in, we believe we have a fighting chance. Wouldn't there have to be an enormous amount of these microbes? I mean, is there an endless supply of this? Where does, what's its source? These microbes, they are asexual, and they have what is called a binary fission method, where they reproduce immediately. They grow geometrically to suit the need in the environment. Very intelligent. Micro. Very intelligent they are. And no question. And that is what we would take into consideration. And we would implement that for the reactors and then for the um, dry debris, that the soil and, and the trees and the plants and the other things that have been radioactive and they put into these special types of bags.
suggesting in my executive summary was that we really need the help of the military because we need their heavy equipment. We need to get access to their faith-based platform so that we can find the edges of the problem and be able to safely uh, solve the problem from the outside inward towards the heavy-duty stuff. Let me go back to the, the um, NRMD that we hear remediation in Oakland. Where is its source? Is there an abundance of it, even though it does replicate fast? What is... Oh, no, no, you got it mixed up. The, the, there is that, another solution set. We have the extremal file or the micro. That's one solution. Okay. There we have a person who can support and culture those guys. That's made by another person, and that person will be able to make as much as we need in order to resolve the Fukushima issue and probably any other issues. Because we have issues here in the United States already besides Fukushima that needs the same solution. So there's several solutions at this point. Huh? Yeah. And there's also one that can restore the soil intelligence, right? Right, and we can use that same nuclear remediation, and we can also use the microbes there as well in the soil. And so now this is a matter of getting a petition signed. Well, what does the petition say? The petition is basically explaining the problem and the fact that we need support from the government, from the military, so that we can get access to some of the technology that they have. In particular, I'm interested in their infrared technology or their technology that will allow us to do thermography so that we can tell where the hot spots are. And that will be a key indicator or metric for us to zero in on the exact locations of where the, where the aquarium might be. Isn't that already being done? You could find various pictures of, of I mean... But those aren't current. Oh. Uh, projections. Okay. Those are predictions or computer models. But they're not actual? Okay. Right. Those are computer models, and they can be fairly accurate. I mean, they can be fairly accurate. But the thing is, we need real-time data from these satellites so that we can have photo photographs of what's going on so that we can be more precise. But the main thing, I'm designing this whole process and keep people alive. I don't want nobody sacrificing their life. I want everybody to be able to go into this problem and come out and enjoy their family. Well, I was looking at, uh, as I was doing research on this, I was looking at the uh, various sorts of photography that's being done and the gas here in uh, Port Aran, California. And there are, there was a, a particular video that I saw that was, uh, you could actually see the gas leak and the material in the atmosphere through this specific type of photography. I didn't make note of it, but there, the technology exists. Yes, it does. And it's also space-based as well. Right. So then, why isn't it being utilized? Like I said, no one wants to recognize we have a problem. When we were first trying to get our product tested, we were going down to Sandia Lab. Now, this is the premier expert in nuclear uh, materials. And when I was talking to them, their experts were saying, oh, don't worry, there's nothing going to be happening from that Fukushima. And I said, oh, no. 